Say hello to the most forgettable iPhone of all time, the iPhone 3G. Despite the 3 in its name, it is actually the second iPhone and was named after its ability to use 3G networking, which the first iPhone didn't have. While it didn't bring too much over the first iPhone, this 2008 smartphone was about $300 less expensive than its 2007 counterpart. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're taking a look at the iPhone 3G. How does it hold up over 12 years later? This is actually the only old iPhone I've never ever reviewed, and there's no real reason for that, I've just never gotten around to it. And at least on my channel, it's probably the least requested uh, review I hear, at least for an iPhone. But that being said, I wanted to complete my uh, archive of uh, old iPhone reviews. So why is this phone specifically so forgotten and never talked about? It was a big change from the first iPhone, moving to plastic from aluminum, which I think most of us can agree is a downgrade as much as I personally like this look, but the price went down along with that by a significant amount. And of course, we also got 3G networking, which really probably should have been in the first iPhone to begin with. But all things considered, this iPhone was a huge shift from the first one, and yet never really gets the spotlight within the Apple community. It likely doesn't help that it ended on a pretty awfully slow software version with iOS 4. This might just be the worst performing iPhone on its latest version, with main contenders being the first iPhone on iPhone OS 3, and the the iPhone 4S on iOS 9. This really isn't so much the fault of the software as it is the hardware. Back in these days, the internal technology was just progressing so quickly that older phones couldn't keep up. In a sense, we were lucky Apple updated the phones at all, and it was a lot more common to see most early smartphones get little to no software updates. Heck, even now, most Androids still don't get a lot of updates. It also doesn't help that the iPhone 3GS has the exact same design and was much more memorable due to better hardware, a better camera, iOS 6, and most importantly, way better sales. Like we're talking 30 million compared to 15 million. Needless to say, users of the 3GS would likely have much more positive feelings about that phone as opposed to the 3G owners who probably were kind of uh, annoyed with the slow experience near the end of its life. So when it comes to past nostalgia, it makes sense the 3GS would take the crown. But today we're gonna take a closer look at the 2008 iPhone 3G as well as some of the context and background behind it. So what better place to start than with the brand new design? The second iPhone made the shift from aluminum to fully glossy plastic with a stainless steel band around the phone. We got for the first time two color options, a black and a white, with the white version retaining black bezels on the front. Of course, that's what I have here. I'm not sure if I particularly prefer it over the black one. I just wanted to get it in white to keep it easy to differentiate from my black 3GS. You can see that they're identical from the back besides the colors, and I actually really like the look. Nowadays, it's easy to scoff at plastic smartphones, but when these were new, there really hadn't been any design trends set yet. In fact, if anything, plastic was the norm, as in the early days, most phones still did go with plastic to keep costs down. And keep costs down, the 3G did, but we'll get to that. There's a significant uh, physical curvature to this phone, one we haven't seen in an iPhone since the 3GS, and this makes it a bit easier to comfortably hold this very thick and chunky smartphone with one hand. The phone feels very small nowadays, given the 3.5 inch display, and that display who man, it's gotta be easily the biggest difference between this and newer iPhones. I mean, yeah, the design is old, but you can still tell it looks like an iPhone. But the screen is non-retina, having a resolution of 320 by 480 and pixel density of 165 pixels per inch. You can see pixels, plain and clear, and going to this from any modern phone, or actually any iPhone after 2010, is just painful. There's also a pretty decent screen gap here between the top glass and the LCD, making it so it doesn't really feel like you're touching the screen itself, but above it. Which, I mean, you are, but it's a strange feeling compared to what we're used to. On the bottom of the phone, we have the 30-pin charging port, which would remain until 2012, when the iPhone 5 would bring lightning. On the top, we have a 35 millimeter headphone jack, which actually was different from the first iPhone. The original iPhone had a bit of an inset to the jack, which made it so most headphones wouldn't fit, minus Apple's own earbuds. A huge oversight, if an oversight, and one that they fixed here. The glossy plastic is really nice. When 
when the phone is in pristine condition, which is basically never nowadays. If you look at old pictures from launch, the phone looks awesome, but nearly 13 years later, we're looking at the back being scratched and chipped to high heaven, and it's also not uncommon for cracks to form near the bottom of the phone by the charging port. In these days, Apple was still figuring things out, and ironically, it wasn't until their first glass phone, I think that they got durability right, as you can still find nice iPhone 4s in pretty decent abundance. Yeah, there's lots of cracked ones too, but if you were careful with the phone, it was fairly easy to keep it in nice shape. I think it's helped that with the iPhone 4 and people cracking their backs way too commonly, cases really became a necessity, whereas in the early days, most people probably weren't used to having to put a case on their phones. But regardless, the paint does chip way too easily, and so yeah, good luck finding one in good condition. We get a very small battery in this phone coming in at 1,150 milliamp hours, which would have been good enough for a day of use back in 2008, probably. There isn't a lot going under the hood, and because of that, there's a chance that you could get one with some decent life left in it. And this one, for example, can idle multiple days without dying, which is pretty impressive for such an old phone. If I tried to actually use it to do anything, even remotely modern, such as watch a video or browse the web, I doubt we'd get more than a couple hours out of it. But I mean, as you would expect, you really can't do much with it anymore. iOS 4 is super limited, and besides obvious incompatibilities from the App Store, even some built-in apps like YouTube don't work. Now, you could always go and jailbreak the 3G, which would allow you to squeeze some super basic tasks out of this thing, but I suggest you only do that if you're a real enthusiastic enthusiast. Maybe that's redundant, but uh, hopefully it emphasizes my point. It's very, very obvious no one in the right mind can use this phone anymore. Even just as a basic phone, it's gonna be slow and painful. Could it make calls? Um, yeah, I guess it could. But beyond that, uh, it'd probably be better as a paperweight than a phone. It's not helped by how darn slow it is. iOS 4 just doesn't run well on here, and it doesn't even allow you to have a wallpaper for the home screen, leaving us with a blank black background. We do get to change the wallpaper for the lock screen though, so there's that. We'll come back to tech specs and performance in a moment, but first let's talk about that little tiny camera there. There's only one camera here. Sorry millennials, no selfies for you. Well, unless you do the old fashioned way where you turn it around and try your best to, you know, be in frame. This camera is two megapixels and whew, it, it looks like two megapixels. It's actually incapable of recording video. Now, of course, this can be unlocked via jailbreaking, but given the photo quality here, I'm sure you'll agree with me that you won't want to do that. This is a bad, bad camera and just very of the era. It's a 2008 smartphone and has a 2008 smartphone camera. Photos look foggy, unfocused, just bad. And while it's kind of neat that there's a bit of a vintage vibe, at least that I get from it, practically speaking, you're not gonna be wanting to take pictures with this thing. I'm just gonna take a moment to uh, clarify something here. I always get comments kind of annoyed with me for criticizing old phones, saying it's not fair for me to, you know, compare them to the modern day. And you know, it's old. So yeah, of course the camera's bad. Of course it's slow. That's the point of the video. I know that this is an old phone. You know this is an old phone. Of course it's not gonna be any good anymore. But I do think it is interesting to look back, see what used to be, and see how it compares to now. I mean, look at this picture from the iPhone 3G versus my iPhone 12. Crazy difference, really. And I think stuff like this is impressive and shows just how far we've come. I'm not doing this just to rag on an old phone. I'm doing it to show we have progressed technologically at a ridiculous rate. I mean, 12 years ago can feel like a really long time, but relatively speaking, it wasn't that long ago, and yet we're so far past what we had back then. So that's really the point of this video. I'm not just trashing on it for the sake of it. I just wanted to show, like, just, yeah, how far we've come. It's crazy when you think about it. Storage actually might not be as different as you'd expect, though. There were only 8 and 16 gigabyte options, but Apple sold 16 gig phones until the iPhone 7 bumped things up to 32 gigs. So, yeah, that's really not that outdated. On a phone this old, 8 or 16 gigs is definitely all you need, and you could even put a pretty healthy amount of music on here, which means if you wanted to use this thing as an iPod, you could, if you really, really wanted to, load some music on it with iTunes, throw it in your car, and bam, you're good to go. Beyond the iPod thing, I can't really think of very many legitimate use cases, and that's, yeah, that's just thanks to the very old internal hardware, and the old software, but it has old software because it has old hardware. So we're looking at a 412 ARM 11 processor and 128 megabytes of RAM. 128 megabytes, that's brutal. For perspective, the iPhone 12 Pro has six gigabytes of RAM, which is roughly what, 60 times the amount? 60 times, wow, it's crazy to think of it in those terms. But again, just goes to show how much technology has progressed since the early days of iPhones as they really began to catch on and started to improve very rapidly. It might not feel like phones have changed much the past few years, but back in these days, 
holidays, every year, the iPhone had the tendency to have a really big update. The 3G was significantly cheaper than the first iPhone, and of course brought 3G networks. The 3GS was way faster, and brought video recording. The iPhone 4 had a much better design, better HDR camera, a selfie camera, and of course that absolutely gorgeous retina display. The 4S improved on the 4, bringing a dual core processor and a much better camera, as well as Siri for the first time, and so on and so forth. The iPhone 3G was right at the beginning of these consistent leaps forward, and while it itself is a leap over the first iPhone, it's kind of a pretty anticlimactic one, which makes it really easy to overlook. Is it really fair for us to just overlook and ignore this phone as a lot of us probably do? I mean, how many times when you think about old iPhones do you think about the second one? I can say I don't think about it very often. Is it really fair? I mean, yeah, I would actually say so. This phone ultimately should have probably been optimized better, given how slow it is on iOS 4. I mean, just watch me moving around the UI here. It was never particularly fast. Actually, at first, no phones were really fast per se. And besides that, this was only Apple's second go at the whole phone thing. This was a forgettable phone because it wasn't really a big upgrade, but it is easy to find an excuse to cut this phone some slack. That price really helped. I mean, again, we're looking at about $300 less than the first iPhone for what was basically the same phone with 3G networking and plastic. So it's been nice to take a small glimpse at uh, the second iPhone, one of the most forgettable iPhones of all time and least exciting for sure. And as boring as this phone is, it's exactly what Apple needed for the time. It set the 3GS up perfectly for success as it skyrocketed Apple's market share, which exponentially grew by the time the iPhone 4 rolled around. And the rest is history. This phone might not be remembered as the one that marked the beginning of the smartphone era, but in a sense, it's more impactful than the first iPhone, bringing that much needed price reduction. Without that, iPhones very well could have continued being a niche, expensive product that only the enthusiast crowd would buy. Perhaps giving another company like Samsung or Blackberry the opportunity to rush to the lead and take the crown. And ironically, iPhones are known for being expensive nowadays, but there is a wide variety of selection, which gives a good iPhone for every price point. If you think about it, the second iPhone, the iPhone 3G, even though it was a main model, was kind of the first budget iPhone. And uh, I don't know, I think it deserves some respect for that. Did any of you out there ever actually use the iPhone 3G? It is super cheap on eBay. If you want a device to jailbreak and mess around with, this is actually not a bad one. It also, again, could work as an iPod. I wouldn't recommend it for that, but it could work. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. And we have a Discord channel. You should come by, say hi. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.